Welcome back to another episode on the Bible Explained. Your host, Avery, also known as Duval Day. You may have seen that name on my book, The Zero Percent. If you're looking to check that out, go to the Zero Percent channel or patreon.com forward slash the zero percent where you can learn how to reach the zero percent tax bracket. This all comes down back to the word of God anyway, and we start diving into that on the book of Romans. Now, we're back continuing from the first video that we did. I have here my co-host with me, Isaiah. Thank you for joining me again. What's Ooh. going on? Everything's all good. All good, all good. I'm excited to get back into this. This is a part two. The uh, part one was dealing with Thoth, the god of Thoth of the Egyptian mythology. And we're showing how everything begins with Thoth. We're going to show how show his rank in the angelic world who he is and how it has translated all the way down from generations to generations to modern society today so we're going to continue to study on thought we've read the first half of the emerald tablets of thought now it gave parallels which is very similar to enoch we'll go more into that and also uncover who else thought is known to be in history which is very important to understand and what we as believers believe today and when we research thoth going back to the days of atlantis aka pan uh, to the egyptians to the greeks to the romans down to modern society we can uncover what we thought was correct but in all actuality We've been bamboozled in a major way, wouldn't you say, Isaiah? Yeah, one hundred percent. The deception, it's 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 deeper than uh, than than we think. It's it's real eye opening. Much much deeper. We're going to share a lot of text with you guys today to kind of show you guys where we're coming from with this. You know, we have the word in front of us, and there's also other books to help us put the pieces together. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're abandoning ship, you know, with the, the Creator, Yahuwah, the Son, Yahusha, and the Holy Spirit. We're not doing that. Uh, but even though we, we fully don't understand it all, we still want to dive into it and do the best we can. So, what we're going to uncover is how to truly, truly worship. And how to have an understanding of the major influences that the angelic realm has uh, by infiltrating and deceiving man as the Lord God. Basically, Marvel says it best, the one above all. That's what they try to do. They try to masquerade themselves as the great I am. Now, things to think about during the study. All right, I want you to think about this. Um, as, as you participate. Number one, time and time again, we see in the Old Testament, the Lord said, kill these people, kill these tribes. And in the same breath, this same God commands us to not kill, to love, to endure, have mercy, et cetera, et cetera. And it would seem that this God is a schizophrenic at times it appears there's there's more than one god speaking what if that was the case if there is more than one god did christ truly come to fulfill those laws where do we even begin to understand why we use the word christ in its inception did it always mean messiah or savior was it used before he was born? We've said before, Isaiah, like in the last segment, that most Christians and even most pastors, when it comes to questions outside the norm, like stories we see in the history, on the History Channel, you know, we just sweep it under the rug and we say, right. uh, well, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. So we'll just find out later when we get to heaven or we can't read any material outside the 66 books of canon of scripture because the new testament says 
thou shalt not add to or take away. And we don't even question if one or more of the, of the 66 books are canon and the non-canonical books, if there was a canon. So we're going to uncover what we can. We're going to try to make sense of this all. Again, we're not going to finish in this segment. We're going to have series after series after series and talking this thing out until we have a better understanding of who we are, uh, why we're here. It's, it's, we have enough in this book here, what we know as the Bible, to give us salvation. We have that. Correct. But right. the historical aspect, we as men have an existential drive to want to figure that out. A beginning and, a, uh, and an end. He is you the know, out. we want to figure yeah. out. Right. Exactly. You hit it on the nose. So let's start off by opening with... Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Everybody knows this. Right here. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed, this is a lowercase s, New King James Version, and her seed, capital S. He shall bruise your head. Remember, capital H, he, and you shall bruise his heel, capital H. This is where it all begins when it comes to angels masquerading as gods to the people to create a fabricated seed story, an immaculate seed story, so that by the time Yahusha shows up, he looks fabricated as well, right? That's what we're getting into. So, before we go back to reading the Emerald Tablets, I want to read a little bit on Thoth here. All right, let's go to our good friend Wikipedia. And there's a lot of good information in Wikipedia with the references down below, as we always say. We've checked it out. You should too. So, Isaiah, if you don't mind, just go ahead and start reading for us. Yeah, you mean start at uh, uh, Thoth? Yeah, right at the top. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, Thoth, borrowed from uh, Coptic, uh, he is like the Abyss, is an ancient Egyptian deity. Uh, in art, he was often depicted as a man with the head of an Abyss or a uh, baboon, uh, animals sacred to him. Uh, his feminine counterpart was Shashat, and his wife was Ma'at. Uh, he was the god of the moon, wisdom, writing, hieroglyphics, science, magic, art, and judgment. His Greek equivalent is Hermes. Those, right. Thoth's chief temple was located in the city of Hermotrop, Hermo, Hermopolis. Uh, ancient uh, Egyptian, uh, Egyptological uh, pronunciation, Keminu. Mm. Um, we read that in the, the tablets. Uh, Kim, and this word here, Kim, gave us the the word. It led to alchemy, uh, the study between science and spirituality and magic. So just wanted to put that out there. Go ahead. Yeah, most definitely. And <laughs> I'm gonna have some trouble pronouncing these words or these names, man. You give <laughs> me all the hard stuff. Uh, <laughs> later known as El Ashmun Ian. Uh, in Egyptian Arabic. Uh, the Temple of Thoth was mostly destroyed before the beginning of the Christian era, but its very large uh, pronouns was still standing in 1826. All right, let's go uh, down. I'm going to go down to the name section. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, start from here. All right. The Egyptian pronunciation of Dwadi is not fully known but may be reconstructed as Duhadi or Dehadi, uh, perhaps pronounced. Yeah, I don't know what that is right there. The uh, This reconstruction is based on the ancient Greek borrowing Thoth or Thoth mm -hmm. or uh, Thehut. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the name was uh, transliterated into Sahidic, Coptic or Coptic uh, 
variously as Thahut, uh, Thoth, Thoth, uh, Tahut, Tahat, Teutst, uh, Thahur, uh, as well as uh, the Boharic, uh, Coptic. Uh, these spellings reflect known sound changes from earlier Egyptian, such as the loss of uh, D. Palatiz pal <laughs> Palatiz palatalization. Wow. <laughs> and merger of H with H I E initial D H. Uh, the loss of pre Coptic uh, final is also common. Following Egypt logical convention and Ishkew's vowel reconstruction, the consonant skeleton uh, Dwadi would be rendered D-J-E-H-U-T-I. And the god is sometimes found under his name. However, the Greek form of Thoth is more common. According to Theodore Hopner, Thoth e Egyptian, Thoth's Egyptian name, written as Dwadi, originated from D-H-W. Uh, claimed to be the oldest known name for the abyss or ibis uh, normally written as h b j the addition of t y denotes that he possessed the attributes of the abyss hence thoth's name would mean he who was like the abyss according to this interpretation uh, other forms of the name duwadi uh, using older transcriptions include uh, Yehudi, uh, Yehudi, Te Tahudi, Tehudi, Zehudi, Tetu, or Tetu. Are you see that? Yeah. This looks like Jehovah, right? Mm -hmm. now, they can't take that name, but they can do a carbon copy of it. This is what Thoth right. is doing. Yeah, this is it's going to get interesting, you guys. Check it out. Let's continue. Uh, multiple time titles for Thoth, similar to the Pharaonic uh, titlery, uh, are also known, including A, Sheps, Lord of Kaminu, Aston, uh, Kenti, Mihai, Hab, and An. An. Mm -hmm. Let's go down here and go to, I'll read the depictions. So Thoth has been depicted in many ways, depending on the era and on the aspect the artist wished to convey. Usually, he is depicted in his human form with the head of Ibis. In this form, he can be represented as the reckoner of times and seasons by a headdress now if you go back into the word you're going to remember that there is a specific individual who was going to successfully be the one who changes times of times and he also changes the seasons as well this is coming from i believe it was the book of daniel where we read about that and Daniel was also talking about that specific Antichrist. And there's not just one, there's many Antichrists. So it is a title. This is why we go back up to what Isaiah just read, where it said, uh, uh, how do you pronounce that word? Pharaonic idolatry. Idolatry. It is a title. Whoever is holding that Antichrist seat, it is a title. In this form, he can be represented as the reckoner of times and seasons by a headdress of the lunar disk sitting on top of a crescent moon resting on his head when depicted as a form of Shu or Akher, uh, Ankher, he was depicted to be wearing the respective God's headdress. Sometimes he was also seen in art to be wearing the Atif crown or the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt. When not depicted in this common form, he sometimes takes the form of the abyss directly. And the abyss was that bird, 
And we read that in the NIV translation only, where it said, who can give the abyss wisdom? This was God mocking Job in the book of Job. So I want to go down to um, the mythology section of Thoth. Because he is then translated as another character, another name. Let's see here. Where do we want to go? Right here. It says, in addition, Thoth was also known by specific aspects of himself. For instance, the moon god, Aya Dehuti, representing the moon for the entire month. The Greeks related Thoth to their god, Hermes due to his similar attributes and functions. One of Thoth's titles was Thrice, Thrice the Great. I say the great, it's easier to say. Was translated to the Greek, Tris Megustos, Megistos, Tris Megistos, making Hermes Tris Megustas. Let's go and click on that. It says Hermes Tris Megistas, uh, Hermes Thrice the Great or Hermes the Thrice Great Test. In Latin, it is uh, Mercurianus, Mercurius, Mercurius. So he is also depicted as Mercury, we know, going into Roman mythology. Now, Mercury is a legendary Hellenistic figure that originated as a syncretic combination of the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth. He is the purported author of the Hermetica, a widely diverse series of ancient and medieval, uh, this pseudonym, let's just go with pseudonym. We're going to have to go back <laughs> to our, our ways of hooked on phonics to get through this thing. <laughs> Texts that laid the basis of various philosophical systems known as Hermeticism. All right. What I want to do is go down to epic section thrice the great that is already a hijack on the tri the trinity the triune and this is getting started here we go read the hermetica the hermetic literature among the egyptians which was concerned with conjuring spirits and animating statues inform the oldest Hellenistic writings on Greco-Babylonian astrology and on the newly developed practice of alchemy. So that was what the Hermetics was all about. It was witchcraft. It was demonology. As you see, they just explained something that we've all seen in Hollywood. If you go back to the movie Shazam, the seven... Uh, what do they call the set those seven statues the seven deadly sins of men mm -hmm. um, those statues came alive by the conjuring of spirits and they entered into the the villain's eye that one eye you never found your champion but we found ours <gasps> So now we've read that, we're going to go down into the uh, the tablets of Thoth. This is where we left off here. It says, deep in Earth's heart, the sons of Amenti heard and hearing, directing the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting using the logos. This is another word for Hermes, Trismegistas. We've seen logos in the New Testament. Is it correct or is it a hijack? We're going to find out. Until the great fire changed its direction over the world, 
Then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing earth's balance until only the temple of light was left. Standing on the great mountain of Undal, still rising out of the water, some there were who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains. Remember, the fountains of the deep opened up. Very similar to the great flood back in Noah's time. Call to me then the master saying, gather ye together my people. Take them by the arts ye have learned afar across the waters until you reach the land of the hairy barbarians dwelling in caves of the desert. Follow there the plan that ye know of. Now, the last time we spoke, I told you that we have tapestries uh, speaking of the wild men the wild men that had hair all over their body and they've encountered a lot of battles with the moors who are also known as the saracens sa sara s-a-w space r-a-w sara is another word for the tribe of jacob and the tribe of isaiah everything comes from jacob anyway so I wanted to show uh, what that tapestry looked like. There's an image, blow it up there. As you see, you have a bunch of pale faces and they've got hail, or hair all over their body. They're using fig leaves as, you know, coverings for their, their bodily parts. But look at who they're battling. They're rushing into the city or the township, and you have nothing but swarthy and tawny people. This is an old tapestry that was gathered, and they're defending their city. Look at, Look at the size of them. Yeah. They're, they're pretty tall. Look at their feet. These are the wild men, the hairy barbarians that were living in caves. The Caucasus Mountains. They got to get into that and discover where they come from. Who are they? How are they vastly different? This stuff existed. This is not a fairy tale. Yeah. See them up there. They're the only, uh, yeah. The, now, uh, what catches me here is you see, this looks like the king and the queen in their chambers. He's got a crown on right here and she's got white hair. Now that is those wigs that we find George Washington and all of them uh mimicking these moors you see when they came and took over the land they had to mimic they weren't taught anything well they were taught they just hijacked and, and took what was already there to put them in those uh, high places so when you wear these wigs you're most likely a, a high chief lord in chancery court equity court common law court and you would wear this whenever you're about to become a judge they were hijacking and doing the same thing that's where they get this from this is not her natural hair. That's a wig. That's what they're trying to show you. So, hairy barbarians. They were dwelling in caves of the desert. Now, gathered I, then my people, and entered the great ship of the master. Upward we rose into the morning. Now, when I think of this, remember that movie Prometheus? I think of in the very yeah. beginning yeah. of that movie... Um, you know, there was one who decided to take uh, the cup and he was the, supposed to be, you know, sacrificing his life. So that way life can start over on the planet. And right above was a ship that was hovering over the waters as the destruction was taking place. I just see this scene that was done by the director of the movie. Dark beneath us lay the temple. Suddenly over it rose the waters, vanished from earth until the time appointed was the great temple. Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning. This is from the west to the east because the sun rises in the east. Until beneath us, the land of the children of Kem, Kamenti, remember that? We just read that with Thoth. Mm -hmm. Raging, they came with cudgels and spears lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. So the sons of Atlantis had far greater technology than the men down below who were trying to avoid this catastrophe 
and they see this ship and they're trying to attack it with spears, what are they going to do? Then raised I my staff and directed a ray of vibration striking them till still in their tracks as fragments of stone of mountain. Then spoke I to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun and its messengers. Cowed I them by my display of magic science until at my feet they grovel when I released them. Long dwelt we in the land of Kim, long and yet alone, yet long again until obeying the commands of the master who while sleeping yet lives eternally i sent from me the sons of atlantis sent them in many directions that from the womb of time wisdom might rise again in her children long time dwelt i in the land of kim doing great works by the wisdom within me upward grew into the light of knowledge the children of kim watered by the rains my wisdom blasted i then a path to amenti so that i might retain my powers living from age to age a son of atlantis keeping the wisdom preserving the records great grew the sons of kim conquering the people around them growing slowly upwards in soul force now for a time i go from among them into the dark halls of amenti deep in the halls of the earth, before the lords of the powers. This is a rank here, before the lords of the powers, face to face once again with the dweller. The dweller is the master. Raised I high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to Amenti. Few there would be with courage to dare it. Few pass the portal, to dark Amenti. Raised over the passage, I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes Earth's force gravity. So there we have the purpose of the pyramids. It allows you to overcome the magnitude of the weight that pulls you down. Deep and yet deeper place, uh, place I force a Deep and yet deeper, place I a force house or chamber. From it carved I a circular passage, reaching almost the great summit. There, in the apex, set I the crystal, sending the ray into the time-space, drawing the force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to Amenti. Other chambers I built and left vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within them are the keys to Amenti. He who in courage would dare the dark realms, let him be purified first by the long fasting. Lie in the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber, then reveal I to him the great mysteries. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him, even in the darkest darkness of earth shall I meet him. I, Thoth, Lord of Wisdom, meet him and hold him and dwell with him always. Builded I the great pyramid, patterned after the pyramid of earth force, burning eternally so that it too might remain through the ages. So we see that pyramids, he's actually using it. If you look at the etymology of that word, it means a fire in the mist, burning eternally. In it, I built it my knowledge of magic science so that I might be here when again I return from Amenti. I, when I sleep in the halls of Amenti, my soul roaming free will incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another Hermes thrice born. Emissary on earth am I of the dweller, fulfilling his commands. So many might be lifted, now return I to the halls of Amenti, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller. 
lift ever upwards your eyes toward the light. Surely in time ye are one of, with the masters. Surely by right ye are one with the master. Surely by right yet are one with the all. Now I depart from ye. Know my commandments, keep them and be them, and I will be with you, helping and guiding you into the light. Now before me opens the portal, go I down into the, the darkness of night. And that is tablet number one of Lord Thoth. As you see, he is transgressing down into Greek mythology as Hermes and Hermes Thrasymagustas. So now let's press on. We've read some sections here that talked about him going into the dark halls of the Menti. Let's look at Enoch and see how his traversing through Middle Earth and all of that, if it's the same. I want to go to chapter 17. Zay, can you read that? Yeah, I got you. <clears throat> And they took and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire. And when they wished, they appeared as men. And they brought me to the dark, to the place of darkness and to a mountain to the point of whose summit reached to heaven. And I saw the places of the luminaries and the treasures of the stars and of the thunder and in the uttermost depths where were a fiery bow and arrows and their quiver and a fiery sword and in all the th and all the lightnings and they took me to the living waters and to the fire of the west which receives every setting of the sun and i came to a river of fire in which the fire flows like water and discharges itself into the great sea towards the west. I saw the great rivers and came to the great river and to the great darkness and went to the place where no flesh walks. I saw the mountains of darkness of winter and the place whence all the waters of the deep flow. I saw the mountains of all the rivers of the earth and the mouth of the deep very similar to the tablets, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. We see the summit, we see going into a dark chamber, we see the flaming fire, which is the flaming flower, and his dealings with the lightnings and other angelic um, hierarchies, very similar. So yes, I can see how the Judeans and, the, and those tribes could see uh, Hermes and Thoth to be one and the same as Enoch. Definitely, I can see that. Let's continue and go to what's called the Hermetica. The Hermetica, the lost wisdom of the Pharaohs. This is by Timothy Frake and Peter Gandhi. I'm only gonna read the introduction section. I'm introducing these texts to you all so that you may be encouraged to grab a copy and do your due diligence and begin to study. I'm just gonna read a small little section here. It says the Greeks who were in awe of the knowledge and spirituality of the Egyptians identified Thoth with their own God Hermes, the messenger of the gods and guider of souls in the realm of the dead, the halls of Amenti. To distinguish the Egyptian Hermes from their own, they gave him the title Trismegistus, meaning thrice great. To honor his sublime wisdom, the books attributed to him became collectively known as the Hermetica. Although largely unknown today, the writings attributed to Hermes Thoth have been immensely important in the history of Western thought. They profoundly influenced the Greeks, and through their rediscovery, in the 15th century Florence helped to inspire the Renaissance period, which gave birth to our modern age. And that's huge because in the last video, we came to the book 
ancient mystic mysteries or mystic masonry. We found out in section number seven here, it says in America, we discovered in the 15th century and repopulated in the 17th was recovered Egypt and the promised land. And that promised land is also called the land of the eagle. What animal represents the United States of America? The, uh, the uh, bald eagle. Bald eagle. It's right here. Egypt is not what it says it is as of 2022. It was only used as a replacement because of Atlantis sunk under the water. So it had to be moved. Very, very, very interesting. Now, Isaiah, I want you to read for me in this book here. If you can start, I read six, but if you can read seven, and we'll go down to section 14. Right on. <clears throat> Seven, no matter how numerous or complicated the works of a lock may be, if but the right key be applied, the Great Pyramid proves to be the long sought key to the mysteries at once of mythology and of the great world religions. Especially interesting is it to Americans in this year of the Colombian celebration of the 400, 400th anniversary of the rediscovery of America. To see it demonstrated that the cosmic terrors interwoven with the very warp and wolf of all sacred literature, Christian and pagan refer to occur occurrences as literary, literally true as the earthquake of Lisbon these stupendous events being connected primarily with a great destruction and recovery of equilibrium in the solar system. And secondly, with the consequent wrecking of the continent of America, when the globe became involved in the consequences of the disorder of sky, the skies, America wow. known. Go ahead. Uh, America. Was, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. America, known to the mystic as Atlantis, when this ruin befell, was the seat of the greatest empire that has ever existed, and its irresistible armies were temporarily were terrorizing all Europe and Asia. Study of the American constellation Scorpio, Sag Sagittarius, and uh, Capricornus. Uh, reveal the Im Im immemorial uh, antiquity of the name of America and the significance of the arms of the United States. And the fact once uh, recognized that it is impossible to separate the eagle from America. The land shadowed with wings of Isaiah over which accordingly appeared two grand eagles the red swan flying down the Milky Way, and the winged steeds, Yagesis and Equilus. All the winged, all the wings known to astronomy without taking the bear from Russia, Perseus, oh, Perseus from Persia, and a floodlight is poured upon the history and mythology, and heretofore much has been vague and inscrutable inscrutable now we are able to at least to see men as trees walking when following the course of the constellations those immovability immovably and perpetually fastened upon america are reached it will appear that while all that is sublime in the his historic past centers upon egypt all that is sublime in the prehistoric past centers upon America, Atlantis. And as the curtain which has hitherto concealed the prehistoric connection between the peoples of ancient Egypt and of America is lifted, it will now be 
seeing that the people of the eagle on the Nile being descended from the original people of the eagle on this continent. The twain are one, and the prehistoric America was the Orient original Egypt or Eagle Land prior to the mighty dip dispensation in the days of Peleg, when the earth was divided and the great globe itself was nearly rent asunder. All right, let's stop there. Let's stop there. Remember, we had some people asking us about is what about Pangaea? Is that correct? Um, mm -hmm. Which is being an island, and now if it's sunken, it created a situation where the waters are now navigable for people to, from Europe to come over to this side. That's why you know Columbus came over as a as an order from the, the king and queen of, of Spain. However, we see right here where it says, in the days of Peleg, when the earth was divided and the great globe itself was nearly rent asunder. So yes, there happened to be a Pangaea. And Peleg is in the book of Genesis and his name means, uh, what does that mean? A great separation of land, something like that, to that notion? Yeah. But what you brought to my attention when you read it was the fact that the peoples of ancient Egypt and of America is lifted. It will be seen that the people of the eagle on the Nile, another word for eagle is United States of America, is mm -hmm. on the Nile. We have to go to scripture now because scripture tells us in Isaiah. We got to go there. We got to go there. I think it was Isaiah 11, um, 15. Right here, it says, The Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt. With his mighty wind, he will shake his fist over the river. Which river? We're talking about the Nile and strike it into seven streams. So one river is gonna be sh stricken to where it breaks up into seven streams and streams have its water sources, uh, uh, tributaries or distrib distributaries coming from under the ground all the way to the top of the surface, all right? So he's gonna turn it into seven streams and make men cross over dry shot. Now, do we have the Nile River in North Africa, the Africa that we know today? Do we have seven streams over there right now? Answer is no. Yes. I don't believe so. No, we don't. There's only two over there. There's only two. Look at in America. We do. It's called the Mississippi River, right? Look at mm -hmm. this uh, picture here, right to the side. You have the main one in dark blue, that's Mississippi River. Now there are seven tributaries and distributaries coming from this main river. Illinois is one, the Ohio River, Tennessee River, Atcha, Atchafalaya River. You have the Red River, Arkansas River, and Missouri. That's seven right there. Exactly seven. Wow. And not too long ago, there was a post out. Here it is from Washington Post, but it was everywhere. Uh, CNN as well. It says, what it looks like as drought strangles the mighty Mississippi. This was, this was uploaded uh, October 27th of 2022. They posted that. Um, it says, Sandra Nelson of Missouri she crouched at the spot of riverbed that would normally be deep underwater, gathering rocks and jars of soil and as souvenirs. Nearby, a man with a metal detector roamed a barren ground for treasures at twilight. A father carried his daughter on his shoulders to witness a sight not seen for generations. And they quote, I had to see it in person, Nelson, who lives 40 miles away in Sickleston, Missouri, she said Monday evening as she roamed the landscape that looked almost like a desert. 
you wouldn't believe this is the Mississippi River. Here's the Mississippi River here, and they got it all brown to show that it's drying up. That the navigable waterway gauges at or below uh, a low water threshold. It says the nation's mightiest, most mythic waterway has been strangled by months of dry conditions. And this is an actual real prophecy. A real prophecy. If we go back to Isaiah, same book. I think it's 19. 19.5. Yep. The waters will fail from the sea and the river will be wasted and dried up and the rivers will turn foul and the brooks of defense will be emptied and dried up, right? They're talking about the waters, those seven streams. River, same word here, Nahar, the Nile. It's happening right now. So we're dealing with the eagle, which is Atlantis ancient Africa, ancient Egypt, old Egypt. It still is today. It is the promised land. It is the center of all of the continents. We have not been shown the true maps. They will never show that, of course. But we know that it is a center. And that is why everyone is trying to flock here. There is an attraction to North America out of all the continents. Sure, people are leaving the United States for financial reasons and all of that. But ultimately, where you want to be, you come down to the brass tacks of everything. You say, I want to be in North America. Everybody is saying. <laughs> yep. So let's go ahead and continue. I'm going to go ahead and read some stuff here on Hermes. And this is a very key point here in the segment. We want you guys to pay attention to this. All right. It says Hermes is an Olympian deity in ancient Greek religion and mythology. Hermes is considered the herald of the gods. He is also considered the protector of human heralds, travelers, thieves, merchants, and orators. He is able to move quickly and freely between the worlds of the mortal and the divine, aided by his winged sandals. Hermes plays the role of the psychopomp or soul guide, a conductor of souls into the afterlife. In myth, Hermes functions as the emissary and messenger of the gods and is often presented as the son of Zeus and Maya and Pleiad, uh, Ple Pleiad or something like that. <laughs> Hermes is regarded as the divine trickster. You see that with Marvel, that's Loki. So Loki is a form of Thoth as well. About which the Homeric hymn to Hermes offers the most well-known account. His attributes and symbols include the herma, the rooster, the tortoise, the satchel or pouch, taleria, which are the winged sandals, and winged helmet or simple uh, pedestals, as well as the palm tree goat, the number four. Look at that, the palm tree. Who came into the city on the donkey on that great day of Palm? Yeah, on Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. The goat, number four, several kinds of fish and incense. However, his main symbol is the caduceus, a winged staff intertwined with two snakes copulating and carvings of the other gods. Right? Let's go down here. In Roman mythology and religion, many of Hermes' characteristics alone belong to Mercury, a name derived from the Latin merx, meaning merchandise, and the origin of the words merchant and commerce. I see. So we get the word merchant from Mercury. Merchandise from Mercury. So could it be Black Friday is all about the worship of Mercury? Mm -hmm. Let's go down. Let's see here. We want to talk about 
a section here that was really that stood out to me really did functions we have different functions here for mercury and here's one we talked about the messenger messenger god as the cycle pump now what about this one as a shepherd god hermes was known as the patron god of flocks herds and shepherds and an attribute possibly tied to his early origin as an aspect of Pan. In Boeotia, Hermes was worshipped as having saved the town from a plague by carrying a ram or calf around the city walls. A yearly festival commemorated this event during which a lamb would be carried around the city by the most handsome boy and then sacrificed in order to purify and protect the city from disease, drought, and famine. Numerous depictions of Hermes as a shepherd god carrying a lamb on his shoulders, Hermes Cleosphoros. Look at that. I want you to pay attention to these words and the spelling of it. Hermes Cleosphoros have been found throughout the Mediterranean world and it is possible that the iconography of Hermes as the Good Shepherd had an influence on early Christianity, specifically in the description of Christ as the Good Shepherd in the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John. Now, when you see this word gospel, you have to question everything. It's nothing wrong with that. Question everything. Look at the etymology of the word gospel. Old English, God, spell. We know that God is a jealous God. We know that he is the God of gods. He is the Lord of lords. And he is the king of kings. So that means he is acknowledging, when he makes that statement, he's acknowledging that there are other gods indeed. So when you say, I worship God, you need to be specific, which one? When we talk about God's spell, which God? Which spell? From which God? It means glad tidings announced by Jesus. So if we go back, the good shepherd went into the town, right? Hermes was worshipped for having saved the town from a plague by carrying a ram or calf around the city walls. He is bringing a glad tithing. Let me continue this definition. It is one of the four Gospels. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The God's spell of Mark. The God's spell of Matthew. Remember the phrase, um, what's that rule where when it's mentioned once, it will always be? I, I can't remember it right now, but if this was meant to be God's spell when it first came out, the law of first mention, there we go. The law of first mention, when it was called God's spell, that's what it's always going to be we call it gospel and it literally means a good spell from a god which god we're getting to the bottom of that in this message here right so this hermes has been busy very busy going through the ages masquerading himself as different gods to different cultures and roman he is now mercury go farther than that the romans identify the germanic god odin with mercury and there is evidence that the germanic peoples who had contact with roman culture as are also accepted this identification so if thoth is hermes and Hermes is Mercury, and Mercury is Odin, and Odin's son is Thor, who is Thor? He is an actual son of God. 
Right. Hey, Avery, I got a question. Mm -hmm. So with you saying Hermes uh, and Thoth and everybody else being so busy, would this fall under the plan of, 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 of Satan's uh, agenda as far as they can do all of this stuff because it, it lines up with what he's trying to, you know, what he's what he's been doing? It's a good question. We're going to see once we get into the other text here in the realm of the angelic, there are different roles, there are different rankings and hierarchy, and they have there are angels that are higher than him who's doing another way of uh, they're, they're obtaining another form of worship for themselves. But in the end, it still goes towards his agenda. Mm -hmm. Right. So to them, it's like, well, yes, you want them to worship you, Satan. But guess what? I'm going to have them worship me far greater than you because I have the I have more legions. I have more angels under me and I can do it. But ultimately, it still leads everyone astray. And that's still Satan's agenda. Right. Yeah. He's just he's just uh, the front man, it seems like. The one willing to to step up and, and say something. Like the like the Lex Luthor of uh of the dark side. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I'm gonna read this section here. Or well, actually you can, just the, the Middle Ages, just this. Okay. Uh, the worship of Hermes has been almost fully suppressed in the Roman Empire following uh, the Christian persecution of paganism under Theodosius, Theodosius I. In the 4th century AD, Hermes continued to be recognized as a mythical or a prophetic uh, figure, though a mortal one, by Christian scholars. Early, uh, and I, I'm gonna stop right there just real quick. Um, and that kind of, I mean, I, I, I don't want to say like it, it takes me off, but and I and I'm not saying you, we need to acknowledge, uh, you know, the dark powers and the dark forces and things like that. But why why not a, acknowledge uh, who these uh, false gods are? Uh, so we could be on guard and and know fully, um, you know, so that that we're able to tread lightly, not mm -hmm. just write them off and, and and just be ignorant, right? You know. And unfortunately, we have been ignorant. We've been given a book, and we see the word God, we see the Lord, the word Lord, and we're saying, oh, that's uh, that belongs to us. That's who we're worshiping. Mm -hmm. In actuality, no. You really need to go beyond just the English word. I hate to say this, but English is a bastardized language. The entire world was operating in the Latin, Aramaic, Hebrew, right? And we have this Correct. English, which completely, completely pacifies everyone. And so that was a plan as well. Right. Definitely. And again, you know, just to just to go off on this tangent again, it it makes me think of, of Star Wars. And if you if uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, with Star Wars, you would know that uh, the Jedi uh, battle the Sith. And the reason that the the Sith fell, or not the Sith, the, the reason that the Jedi fell uh, when they were at their most power or the, the highest power, um, not only was their balance uh, needed. But they were so ignorant and afraid of of the Sith or anything in darkness, which is kind of hypocritical because in the Jedi Code they're they're sworn they're sworn enemies. They're supposed to uh, to seek and and destroy the Sith. But when it came to anything of the Sith, they were so afraid of it they didn't even see it right in front of them uh, with Palpatine. Uh, being the uh, being the, the the emperor, you know, and he was able to to creep in there and and cause all of this stuff and and take the chosen one. That's a whole nother uh, you know discussion for another time. But they they were defeated because of ignorance. They were too 
focused on other things and, and not seeing that it was the darkness was right in front of them. The enemy was right there. They mm -hmm. didn't recognize it. Mm -hmm. Masquerading. Right. So, and, I, and I'm, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to be like, oh, you will, you need to go uh, get into a book of, of witchcraft. Heck no. But you don't, you, we don't need to be ignorant. We, we need to be able to, uh, to have discernment from the Holy Spirit to be able to figure out, oh, okay, well, I know what that is. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I, I know to stay away from it and I recognize it. I'm not dwelling in it. Right. We know what to call on and what not to call on. Mm -hmm. Good point. Exactly. We're going to get into Star Wars too. Um, that's going to be real fun. Real fun to get into that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, early medieval Christians such as Augustine believe that a uh, you, you uh Hermes uh, tried Medicus uh, try <laughs> Trismegistus <laughs> Trismegistus had been an ancient pagan prophet who predicted the emergence of Christianity in his writings. Some Christian philosophers in the medieval and renaissance periods believed in the existence of a uh, Prisco theologia, the, theologia uh, a single thread of true theology that could be found uniting all religions. Christian philosophers use hermetic writings and other ancient philosophical, uh, philosophical literature to support their uh, belief in the uh, uh, Prisca theologia, arguing that Hermes uh, Trace Megustius uh, was a temporary uh, contemporary of Moses, or that he was the third in line of the important prophets after Enoch and Noah. The 10th century Suda attempted to further Christianize the figure of Hermes, claiming that he was called Trismegistus on account of his praise of the Trinity, saying there is one divine nature in the Trinity. Mm hmm. Now, when we get into the books, we're going to understand there is a what's called a triune council in the angelic realms. It's going to get deep right here at this point. Now, he yeah, just see. read to you. He just read to you that uh, Hermes Tristes Megistus, the thrice great, he had been an ancient pagan prophet who predicted the emergence of Christianity in his writings. How is that possible? Because they, they knew that they were going to give a specific story. They're watching man. They're watching the progression of man. They see what needs to happen. They see how they need to convert from where they are to a new form. Of themselves just in a new light right that's what's going to happen and this is and we're talking about the, the 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 fallen correct this is the fallen right and see and this is this is a, a little sidebar or to add to that is as as a believer in uh in yahusha there is how do i say it These are these are perfect beings. Uh, Lucifer, aka Satan, was was perfect in the sight of the Most High, um, and I, I believe it's in Isaiah. Uh, he uh, the Most High describes uh, what Lucifer was and looked like before the fall. Is it is it in Isaiah? It is. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, uh, we were we were jamming about it yesterday, and we we were coming to the conclusion that Satan is the father of lies. At one point, he was a perfect being, and uh, people, humans, um, me, uh, men and women, were in a finite state after the fall. Right. So you have a you have a perfect being. Uh, being able to perfect uh, deception and lies 
So it's it's and he's had a very long time to perfect lying to make it seem like this is reality. Mm-hmm. So just just keep that keep that in mind as we go into this uh, in these these texts and these documents and things like that is we're not jumping in here thinking, oh, man, you know, I, I'm, I'm running with this 100 percent. No, he's he's got he's got an agenda um, and he can make something that you think is right in front of you seem like man no this is it this is this is this is the truth when it, it's an onion it's, it's a lot of layers of to you know to this so it's 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 these it's these beings these i at one point these perfect angelic beings manipulating and deceiving it which is is second nature to uh, is is second nature to them Mm-hmm. You're right. Good word, good note. You know, you guys, I was just reading down here as he's speaking. Uh, I found this word, you know, Thanatos. And I did do a, a little preview as to uh, how we're going to get into the, uh, the Kabbalah of Thanos from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I haven't forgotten about that. I just wanted to take some time and really, really figure out what I want to talk about. I know you guys were waiting for it. And now I know exactly what I want to do with that, that subject. It was one of those subjects where I just said, uh, let me just, it was on my mind, let, let's do something. And then when it came down to study, I figured I need to go back to the drawing board. So now I'm ready to do that. Um, so look out for that video that's going to come out on Thanos as Thanatos. And now it's here. Or should I say, I am. Now, I came down to this section, Creo Photos. Remember, I told you guys to pay attention to this word. It says in ancient Greek culture, Creo Photos, it's a Greek word, or Creo for us, the ram bearer. Who is the one that's almost like a ram or a lamb who gives his life? And we know that to be Jesus Christ, Yahusha, the Messiah, right? So here we have Hermes predicting himself as Cleos Foros, and that's how he was able to predict that Christianity was coming. Mm-hmm. He was going to be the initiation of that story. Again, why? When he actually does come from an immaculate conception, no one's going to know who he really is. They've seen all these stories for generations already. Right? Now, you guys also think about this. Why would God in his all-knowing say in Genesis 3.15, there's a sea story that's coming to give the angelic uh, a head start to deceive man? Why would he put man, his creation, in his image at such a disadvantage? My answer to that would be is this. He doesn't need anything. The Almighty, the Great I Am, he doesn't need anything. However, he is a God of love. And we have to look at it from a parent perspective. We don't need children, but we want to have them. And we hope that how we've raised them, they choose to follow what we tell them to do. If they don't, yeah, if they don't, we're going to spare the rod up until a certain age, but they have to leave the house at some point and choose their own way. Now, when they're of age and they can choose right from wrong, when they choose what we've taught them, doesn't that feel good as a parent? Heck yeah, it does. It's the very same thing for him. Very same thing. So I also see it as a, as a, you know, lack of a better term. I see it as a, as a flex on on the father, on the father's uh, side. As far as I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing, and you still can't stop it. You still can't come against uh, what I'm doing. Right? Isn't that what he did with Job? Mm-hmm. The enemy went before the throne and Job and said, look, I'm going to go and jack him up, take everything for him. God permitted it. He said, but just don't you touch him. Touch everything that he owns, but don't touch him. And I guarantee you, he will still be according to me. And that's what happened. 
That is what is happening with us, with all these gods masquerading as other gods and distracting us. This is called the trials of Job. We are under the trials of Job. Everybody has their own trial of Job to get through. That's what it is. So, this Krios Foros is a figure that commemorates the solemn sacrifice of a ram. It becomes the epithet of Hermes. Now, let's get into the book that we were talking about. This is the book that... Remember, this is interesting. It's historical. We're just pulling out the nuggets. I'm not going to read the entire book. It is a gigantic book. Gigantic book. Look at this on Amazon. It is $6,000. Now, I'm sure you guys can go online and find it like we did. But <laughs> <laughs> if you want it, here's the link. You can, you can go and get that. This was I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes, yes, this was this is about the heavyweight jam. <laughs> this is a big one right here. This is a big one. So this book is cool. Um, it gets you directly into the mind of answering those questions that we said in the onset about are there different gods in the Bible? And if there are, who are they? How do they have the authority to speak the way they speak? Right? Why would God allow such a thing? You got also have to keep this in mind too, you guys. Don't think that the enemy is not going to try to keep the truth from you by any means necessary. Tablets, uh, scrolls, who 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 is hiding those things? The Vatican, mm -hmm. the ancient libraries, Government. Smithsonian. They're hiding those things. There's just enough. Just like there was just enough for Job to survive every persecution, there's just enough for you to get to the, the great I am. It says, O-A-H-S-P-E. This is a word, I do not know how to pronounce, but it does give you the definition in this book. A Bible in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors, a sacred history of the dominions of the higher and lower heavens of the earth for the past 24,000 years together with a synopsis of the cause Magani of the universe the creation of planets aka stars lights the creation of man the unseen worlds the labor and the glory of gods and goddesses in the Etherean heavens with the new commandments of Jehovah to man of the present day with revelations from the second resurrection formed in words in the 33rd year of the Cosman era. Already now, introduced to a whole yeah. other. Now, real quick, I just, uh, you know, we, we, we keep on saying this as we dive into the, these, uh, these, these, these texts and these new documents, we're not saying you know take this as scripture run off with it and live your life according to this but there are there are pieces that help connect dots uh in other places and we're not using this to back up scripture or or anything uh of the sort but you know ask the as you get into these things ask the holy spirit uh for uh discernment you know, that the discernment that only he can give, you know, I, we don't co-sign with everything in, in this book. Um, it's all for, for research purposes and, and question. Exactly. We're just picking out the, the Jews here. Now, one day we may read this book online with you guys live, chapter by chapter. If you guys want to do that, let us know. We'll do it. And we just say yeah, that this, this book is heavy. Be prayed up for real got to be guarded you really do and uh we will as well so we're not trying to lead anyone astray but we're just trying to understand what is these terms that we see in the word that we've been overlooking all this time that's all we're trying to do we love the hunt and treasure hunt like most of you so 
Let's get down to the glossary. There's a couple of words that I want to look at. The first word is Algonquian. Algonquian, we know this term. This was a term, um, you know, placed on the Indians. That's the, not the word that, that's not who they are. Indians is an employee term that comes from the Dutch East India Trading Company in the Dutch West, now known as Shell. So we have Algonquian tribes, and that, that was really based all over the, the New York area and the East Coast. And it says the Algonqu Algonquian is the United States of North American Indians, Moors, Saracens, Saracens before their destruction by who? Christians. Mm. Now, if you're if you're easily offended, uh, I don't think this uh, this part of the video is for you. You know, that's, so that's, get ready. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, let's give it to them. But you know, <laughs> they're gonna just slowly make sense of this. You guys got to stick with us. Like I said, it's gonna be a series. We have it drawn out. Stick with us, and we'll get to the bottom of it and figure out have we have we been uh, bamboozled or not. Let's see. Let's look at the word angel, a spirit man, which is a Sioux, also a Sugan, and Gansby. The word spirit does not define whether man or animal, but is often erroneously used instead of angel. Mm -hmm. Let's go to off off the god who submerged the continent of pan now we know that this is not the great i am because as we get down further in the glossary it's going to tell you that this is a rank in the angelic dominion you see in the bible how we have archangels we have messengers we have seraphim we have off in them we have the gibberines we have the 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 ephanim we have who are those uh the wheels within wheels uh cherubim lightnings abaddon seraphim. Lion, seraphim all of them those are different ranks and they have powers right. to do different things we have angels that and hold that, the yeah. winds yeah and as as we get as we uh dive deep into this book too i want you guys to keep in mind that the the enemy side is a he tries his best to copy uh what the most high has you know he he took uh one third with him and he has uh as crazy as it sounds he has hierarchy uh on the dark side there's order in chaos or else they they pretty much can't do what they're trying to do if there's no order on their side so you gotta you gotta think that okay well if the dark side uh, the, the fallen angels and uh, the demonic, if they have roles and titles, well, what about the other two thirds that serve the most high? You know, what what type of roles do they have? You know, is it is it a mirrored, uh, are they mirrored roles in a sense of what does their hierarchy look like in two thirds of an of a innumerable number that we can't count up to that's that's jobs for everything i mean the smallest things uh the, the smallest things to the biggest things they all they're all assigned to uh different things that the that the most high has us has them assigned to right so just just keep just keep that in mind that uh these titles and these uh these different names and things like that it's different uh jobs and stuff that that the most high has assigned to to his angels mm -hmm. in this book he's even said that there are angels that are close to being to him but they will never overthrow him never crazy let's go down to archangel angels next in rank to gods who dwell in certain arcs in the etheria they generally come in the dawn of a cycle to give new inspiration to mortals. Whilst they remain with mortals as during the last few years, good mortals become more angelic toward one another. Let's go to Asu. Asu, the first race of man to crawl on the belly. 
see the book of Jehovah. This right here got us thinking, you guys. Yeah, that's crazy. I went back to Genesis 3.14 where it talked about, um, you know, cursed be you. Uh, when it talked about the serpent being cursed, we had to crawl on his belly. That's the only section that we find about crawling on your belly. So it's a possibility that we have the creation story in Genesis. However, the part where it's talking about the creation of man, that just might not even pertain to us. Because it says here, the first race of men, if it's true, if there is a such thing as the first race of men to crawl on their belly, that whole thing about man being created in the garden and all that, that may not even pertain to us. We may not even know how we came to be. We may not, or just have access to that text. It may have been taken out a long time ago and replaced with what these angels wanted to give us. Who knows? But this is an interesting definition, definition because this would not fit with the entire first three chapters of the book of Genesis. In fact, the word Genesis comes from the family Genonisi, the family, the Italian family, the Greek family. And Columbus is connected to that family. We are going to get to the bottom of it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> We're gonna get to the feathers, bottom of it. <laughs> feathers about to be ruffled. <laughs> the word beast, the animal man, or the earthly part of man, anything that is enforced as a religion. So now it makes sense. Those who take the mark of the beast, it means you're taking on a form of religion. It says in the right hand or in the forehead, Right. If I were to accept something, a religion, that means I have accepted it in my mind. There's the forehead. And whenever I accept something, I'm actually going to do an action connected to it. I'm going to move. And it is always accustomed to when you do an action, you complete that action with your right hand. Now, the mark comes in so many different variations. It's not just a, a, a visible one that you'll see as a stamp or something in your hand or your forehead. It, it comes in so many different variations, it's not even funny. So you have to understand how that can be. We'll get into that. Let's go down to a few more words here. I thought this was interesting. Kapilya. Kapilya, it means a deliverer, a man of India, contemporaneous with Moses. And like Moses, he delivered the faithist out of bondage. Keep this word in your mind. Not by migration, but by establishing their freedom throughout India, he also wrought miracles, sometimes spelt Kapeja. A star was named after him as well. This is another person who did miracles. And he delivered the faithless out of bondage. Isaiah has asked me before, if we're going by the term Christian today, and we just read the definition of Algonquian, that those specific Moors and Sadducees were destroyed by the Christians, automatically Christians is not something you want to be associated with. So if we did not associate as that what did we associate ourselves with what did jacob isaac and, and and abraham refer to themselves to be right here faithless that's what they were called and you're going to find out that everyone that was attributed to uh, this term here serving their allegiance to the great i am the the great spirit uh, all of the different terms tishkanu all of that stuff that we learned to call him were attacked by Christians. It's gonna get deep. It really, really is. It really is. Let's go down to that word. Here we go. Christ or Christi. Wisdom, knowledge, education after the false God. Loamong. 
Lo Among, there's another angel. He falsely took this name, Christi, or Christ. It became synonymous with warrior. What about Christians? I got, I got, I got a jam real quick. So mm -hmm. you guys are going to notice uh, in these definitions that it's always going to say, it's going to give the description and then it's going to give you the name of the uh, the false uh, god or the fallen angel after it gives the the intention of uh, or the definition of that title or of that name. And so uh, as we go down, you're going to see that Osiris uh, is listed and it's going to give you a description. And so what I thought was these fallen angels uh you know and these false these false gods they had a certain amount of power and and prestige and they had it they had it all you know and beforehand or, or and when they fell they were so haughty uh on them own selves acting like they stuff don't stink well if the most high got this i want some so they fall and then they take, and what do they do? It says right here, Lo Among falsely took this name. So to me, that says right when they fall, they need a title of their own because they just, they think they got it like that. And so they hijack right there, falsely took this name after they fall because they need some sort of title because they are not originators. They are not the creator. So they what they do is, they take it for themselves. They can't create anything. Mm -hmm. They can't. Like I said, guys, we go in there in this one. We go in there. Yeah, we have Christians to. Or Christians, right? A brotherhood of warriors. They were named Christians in derision by the Hebrews. That's an opposition one who rushes into a multitude of rioters and with a sword enforces peace is a true Christian. With the sword, isn't that the opposite? Thou shall not kill. That is the opposite. They're doing the exact opposite to the Torah, to God's law. Mm -hmm. And this is the directive coming from Loamah. A people whose faith is in arms and standing armies. You're going to see which army is this. The following words are synonymous. Brahma, Buddha, Christ, Christi, Baal. Another word for Baal is Bible. B-Y-B-E-L-E. -E. And then you get B-I-B-L-E. From King James. Now, King but Avery, James, I thought that was I thought that was supposed to mean basic instruction before leaving Earth. Ha. Huh. We wish. We wish. King James was a was a Mason under Two Ball King, the order of Two Ball King. And he practiced alchemy. Man. Ashtaroth. <laughs> Dagon. That's the Philistine god, Vishnu, over in India, Ashdod, knowledge, wisdom, Krishna, light, Po, Tain, Wa, Anito, and in fact, a score of others. What about crucify? Crucify means to melt, to test by fire, to test by binding. The original form of testing a suis. A suis is somebody who is very sensitive to hearing the voice of angels and actually seeing them in the spirit realm. And that spirit realm is called S, E-S, the S. And in fact, that word S has been erroneously translated in the King James and New King James as the tree of life. Tree was the word yeah. S. So look at this. Whoever was assumed to be a suist or a sargis practicing mediums they were binded 
They binded him on a wheel. You guys are going to see what the cross was really about. And this goes into the book of Maccabees and the book of the war of the Jews. It will make sense after seeing this material, why they kept it out. It will make sense why it seems when Christ was speaking, he was, he was double talking. It's going to get crazy. The enemy has been at, the enemy and his subjects have been at this for a long time, folks. Long time. Long you time. know, and it, it, and hearing stuff like this, when, you know, when I first uh, heard it, when Avery um, presented it to me, it could be so uh, disheartening and, and disparaging. And you like, well, what the heck, you know, why, why does it have to feel like this? You know, with the scales. Uh, being pulled away from your eyes and and seeing things for what they really are, but you know we 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 must remember who do we serve? You know we serve the Most High, uh, Triune God. So just keep that in mind always. Here it is that word I was telling you. S. It is the unseen world. I want you to think of this word as the Tree of Life. The unseen world. It was a portal. It was a way of going into something. It's unseen to mortals. So when people say, okay, after Pangaea and Peleg and the destruction of, you know, flood and all that, where's the tree of life? Well, you can never see it to begin with. You have to be in that specific uh, state, which is out of the sinful state in order to know where it is and to enter it. So don't even think about trying to find that uh, if you're in a sinful state. It's an unseen, it's unseen to mortals. This is only something for Adam and Eve before they were mortals. Don't even worry about the tree of life, right? We're gonna go down a little bit more. It's gonna get good. Faith this. One who has faith in Jehovah, being overall and within all to a wise and definite purpose. One who has not faith in anything but Jehovah. One who endeavors to make himself in unison with Jehovah by doing good until unto others and in striving to put away self-gratification, a non-resistant, the opposite from Uzayans. Uzayans are an opposite to the faithless. And Uzayan it's basically heathens. is a heathen and Uzayan is a Christian. Zion is uh, Islamic, is Buddha, is Mohammedan, is everything outside of being considered a faithless. That's what it is. I wanted to go down to this word here. Hidon. A Zarastian, a Zaras through, man, a Zarastrian. Hat, a hat red with blood, a rimless hat renowned by Habak, a faithist. Okay, Habak was a faithist, and he was cast into a den of lions. The hat was afterward recovered. The master in the lodge wears the hat, during which time he is saluted as Cardinal or Hiram, which is the Ahamic word for red hat. It just told you how cardinals get selected. They got to go into, they're, they're part of the lodge of the master ascensions, and they enter into what's called some type of ritual where they sacrifice somebody. They throw them into a den of lions. If I were to go to cardinals right now, part of the Catholic church, and look at that, a red hat, Right? All these people wearing the red hat. It sound like a hijack to me. Go ahead. I said that sounds like a hijack to me. From what? Oh, the the uh the fez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure Habak was wearing the fez. You know, everybody wearing the red hat. It was first being warned by the one that they're going to sacrifice 
row into the lion's den or whatever they may do today. And now they're wearing it. If they're successfully able to go into the lion's den and pick it up while that lion is doing what it's doing to its victim and not be touched, then they get to be next. Sickening. Very sick. People want to be a part of the Catholic Church. So be it. I wanted to talk about this word here, but not now. Later. Here we go. Lord, a God of the earth or a part of the earth next lower in rank than the God of heaven and earth. The first exalted rank an angel receives in heaven. There's so many of them. Mm -hmm. That's the first rank you get. The first rank in heaven receives is Asaph. The second is Ashar. The third is Lois. The fourth is Marshall. The fifth Lord. And the sixth God. You said Drake calls himself that, right? Yeah, correct. He could be. He's in a powerful place. Marshals are rather vice lords and are not titled. The first title is Lord, the second God. God sometimes appoints a Lord to a single city or on earth, sometimes one to a nation. A Lord's minor dominion is 100 million angels and a major several thousand millions. Lords must have passed beyond the second resurrection before eligibility. What is a Lord God? Because we see this all the time in scripture. And the Lord God said to my Lord, we see that all the time. David said a lot of that in the book of Psalms. Lord God is an angel that fulfills both offices. So could we really be reading? How do we know we're reading directly from the God of the great I am? And how do we know it's, it's an angel? That's the hijack in scripture. That's the hijack in scripture that's making people not understand what they're reading. To where there's a, a schizophrenic God. One minute he says kill, the other minute he says love. Which is it? And this was all done before the New Testament came. So this is why it's good to have what's called uh, concordance dictionaries. To actually look at those words and go beyond just the English preface. It'll give you more detail. That's why we're in these books here. It puts pieces together. You don't want to use the entire book here to give you the, oh, this is this perfect doctrine. We'll just stay here. No. You take pieces and you that's how that's how the enemy is going to do it. They're going to only give you pieces elsewhere. And if you find it, God bless you. Simple as that. We're going down a little bit. Hold so, on, go back up, Avery. Justin. Um, right there, Osiris, what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Osiris, uh, philosophy of measurement, one who maintains that only what can be measured or weighed is real knowledge. The sun is the largest. Therefore, the sun is the almightiest, also a god. See the book of Osiris. There was also a false god, Osiris, of latter date who inspired the building of the pyramids. And see, see guys, that's what I was saying. It gives you the definition of the original term and how it was supposed to be used. And then right here, the latter is the hijacking. Osiris thinking himself, and that, that might need not even be his original uh, name. That's just what we see from right here. That's but thought. he get right. So him getting so haughty on his own self gives you the definition and then boom they see this title and they're like oh okay I, i'm i'm gonna hijack that for myself and and make it perverse and this is this is who i am now mm -hmm. yep there's two versions that you guys can find online of this book 
And in this one here, it gives us some very, very interesting definitions. And it's all in the same mindset, but I want you to look at this over here. Look right here. This is what the real name that they go by, the creator, not just created by itself, capital T, capital C, clear distinction as to who we're talking about. The great spirit, the almighty, the I am, Eolin, Eoi, Eoi, Eloi, Ergo Quim, Jehovah, right? These are all names by man that we use to call the, to call the great I am. Here in this bracket here, it says Father, Heavenly Father, all highest, all light, all person. Uh, we see how Odin has hijacked that, the all father. And the all father is not in here. It's just you're the father or the heavenly father. Yep. And right under that, look where it says false. Mm -hmm. At the bottom. False, right? It? Lord, Lord God, God. So go back to Genesis. It's, it's all of this. And God created in the beginning. And the Lord and the Lord God. It's all of this. And this is all pertaining to angels who assume kingdoms in atmospheria, denying Jehovah, professing themselves to be the creator, and yet born of a woman. Like I said, what we've read as far as the creation account in the book of Genesis, that may not even pertain to us. It's a hijack. Now we got to go out and find it. Could be. And if it's there, I'm going to find it. You better believe I'm going to find it. Go up here. Avery, is, uh, is, is Satan the ruler of the world, uh, the world's government today? Yes, he is. The world system. Remember, we talked about uh, that the sun of the almighty, the great I am, he's the word, right? And if you put the L in there for lies, father of lies, now you have world. See, God doesn't use the, the God, the creator, he doesn't use the word worlds at all. He don't do that. Cause there's only one. He hmm. uses creation. Creation, that's it. And all of creation, heavens of heavens. That's what he uses. Look at here. The false Lord God, Anuhaje, who first made the names Lord God, Lord God, Dias, or Dias, a deity, Zeus, Josh, and Hojosh, worshipful, on the earth in place of the great spirit in place of the great spirit lord god lord god is all in place of the great spirit you know back in the days of the medieval times where you would watch those type of movies they would say oh my lord as soon as a king would come into the room that is not a proper title to give to the great spirit the great i am all right the triunes the founders of the trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All right, here we go. See, all of this is, this section here is false. That's what they're saying. That the triunes is that there's a triune angelic council and they are the founders of these terms. When they got time for the people, the mortals, that they were tired of receiving terms like oracles, Thoth, Hermes, Mercury, they're like, okay, you, you guys are messengers. Send us the real deal. And I'm going to read that in this book. Send us the real deal. Then they came up with, oh, okay, well, I'll give them the Father and I'll give them the Holy Ghost. And they'll still think that they're dealing with the real God because the, the real God is not coming off the throne to come to these people. He can't do that. The minute that people figure out that, oh, you guys are really not him. Okay, I'm not worshiping you no more. They came up with these right here and they gave it to the people. Thoth, Gabriel, 
the founder of the Mohammedan nation. It says, the, and the beast divided itself into four great heads, like we read in Revelations, and possessed the earth about, and man fell down and worshiped them. Right? What are the four beasts? Christi, Buddha, Badaba, and Mohammedan nation. If you take those four, you have all the nations of the earth right there. All religions are comprised under those four. Christian and Catholics, Baptists, Kojic, all of that is right in here. Buddha, the Indian nations, Badama, and then you have Islam and Africa. All of that is here, it's built in. Here we did, we talked about Loamong. He was the false god who founded, by inspiration, the great sect called Christians. He is first mentioned in the book of Esther, chapter uh, 13. Uh, yeah, that's 10, right? 13. And his career is continued in the books of Esther and S, the unseen world until he is finally cast into hell, which corresponds in the date to the time the Pope established himself as vice vicegerent on earth and very properly because his God was non. We're gonna get into some stuff, you guys. It's gonna be crazy. Thoth was the inspiration to found it, the Mohammedan nation. You got all those people out there talking about peace to the gods, right? Peace, peace, all of that. You're under the Mohammedan nation and Thoth <laughs> created that. Keep digging. You have to keep digging to know where this stuff comes from. And if you don't believe it, at least you know. At least you have a better, a better sense of the idea. So let's go back to this book here. Now, the first page that I would like to go to, if you have any thoughts while I find that page, Isaiah, go ahead and say it. I'm going to search for it right now. Let's see. I go to page 17. There we go. Page 17. I want you to read from point 18 all the way to 23. Okay. Uh, 18. Neither shalt uh, thou have any God, nor Lord, nor Savior, but only thy creator, Jehovah. Him only shalt thou worship henceforth forever. I am sufficient unto mine own creations, and to as many as separate se separate themselves from the dominion of the beast, making these covenants unto me. Have I given the foundation of my kingdom on earth? And all such shall be my chosen by their covenants and by their works shall they be known henceforth on the earth as mine and shall be called faithists. But to as many as will not make these covenants, have I given the numbers of the beast and they shall be called use you. Uzayans. Uzayans. <laughs> signifying destroyers and these shall be henceforth the two kinds of people on earth faithists and uzayans mm. and the angels of heaven descended to the earth to man and appeared before him face to face hundreds of thousands of them speaking as man spaketh with the writings as man writeth teachings these things of jehovah and his works and in the third year 33rd year thereof, the ambassadors of the angel host of heaven prepared and revealed unto man in the name of Jehovah, his heavenly kingdoms, and having thus therein made known the plan of his delightful creations for the resurrection of the peoples of the earth. Wow. So now we see why the angels selected the age 33 for the Christ as his death 
when it says the ambassadors, it's talking about the angelic ranks, the angelic host. Angels begin to manifest. This is exactly what they're doing. See, it's talking about the known plan of his delightful creation. So they, they were trying to act first. I'm going to go down to the next section for us to read. All the way towards the bottom. Nine. I want to go to 957. I, I haven't got this far yet. <laughs> Guys, there is maps in here that you may want to take a double look at. But as always, we tell you, be prayed up before you go in and take it as interesting. The same thing that people will tell you, the Apocrypha. Take it as interest. You may believe that the Apocrypha is the original, that it's always been there. They've taken it out, and then they put that scripture in there. Thou shall not add or take away. So now you know not to ever go look at it. Who's to say it wasn't already there? Because it does make sense when you put it in there. And it is more graphic. There's a lot of deaths that happen in that in that book, Maccabees and all of that stuff. It's really graphic. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> brass tacks. The enemy hates us. We're made in in the Creator's image. Of course, he hates us. Uh, <laughs> you know, spoiler, fair warning. I'm going to read something like that in this video. In the book of maccabees and it's uh you may get a little teary-eyed but it shows you what the faith this is all about it really does at 9 57 i'm going to start at point number 29. it says for three years joshu traveled amongst the israelites preaching and restoring the ancient doctrines and there were gathered in groups of tens and twenties and fifties, more than 2,000 Israelites of the ancient order of Moses, who became steadfast followers of the teachings of Joshua. But because of persecution by the apostate Jews, they kept themselves aloof from the world, having signs and passwords whereby they knew one another. First, the God for all, a.k.a. Bible, a.k.a. Christ, a.k.a. Loamong, and after all, and after him, Thoth, inspired the kings and rulers against these faithists, and they proved them by commanding them to eat flesh, even swine's flesh, the which, if they refused, was testimony sufficient before the laws. See, if they get you to eat it in front of the faithist, it's going to cause the other faithists to lose their way and go and accept all of the different traditions and festivals of the Greeks and the Romans, all of the Hellenistic practices, to convict them of being enemies against the angelic gods. So, they were scourged and put to death whenever found. Now it came to pass that Joshua went into Jerusalem to preach. And in not many days thereafter, he was accused of preaching Jehovah and he was arrested. And whilst being carried to prison, he said, ye are hypocrites and blasphemers. He practiced none of the commandments, but all the evils of Satan. Behold, the temple shall be rent in twain, that means two, and ye shall become vagabonds, homeless, on the earth. And that the multitude cast stones upon him and killed him. And Jehovah sent a chariot of fire and bore his soul to paradise. The Lord said, this is an angel. Now. Behold, Loamah stood no longer upon the practice of righteousness, but upon might. Neither considered he more resurrection of mortals or angels, 
the craft and wisdom of Baal baffled Loamon in both his heavenly battles and his battles for mortals. Behold, the whole of the countries of Egypt, Parsi, Hellenus, or Hellist, and Europa were in war, and the heavens of these countries were also in war with hundreds of hells within them with hundreds of hells within them. Go back to the glossary and read the definition of hell. Loamong fought no longer for the Trinity nor the Holy Ghost, but to save his heavenly kingdom, to save his S, unseen <laughs> world, E-S. I know what that sounds like. <laughs> Lest he be captured and cast into hell, and even more desperately was Baal situated against him. In the meantime, the other two triunes began to war against each other in their heavenly kingdoms, contending for boundaries and subjects. Thoth sent the following message to Loamong to witness. Greeting to thee, thou most high triune, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Wherein I am embarrassed, I pray thee, give me leniency. My suit is not within due deliberation and through prayers to the Holy Ghost. Long have I fought thy battles, and I have gained great power and authority in many kingdoms, in heaven and earth. But behold, I labor against gods who have the advantage of me, the Chinya, rebel gods and the venue rebel gods that fled from the triune kingdoms in the east have taken upon themselves names popular with mortals witness these names nestor aka Huit, neptune poseidon oleus pendere priam hogoth phobius anawakax Apollo, Apollos, Shunganasita, Pelis, Peleus, Saturn, Kronos, Thalia, Masio, Masue, Thester, Suko, Byreth, Calchas, Thetis, Arama, Me, Mata, Achala. All these different names here. Even Thor is here, right? Vulcan. Go through all of these, you'll see who they have masqueraded as. Krit, that's another one for Kriste, Orion, Neptune, Thor. Thoth continued, and yet these are not all, for these gods have no fear of the Holy Ghost, and they choose any name that will be flattering to mortals. Do you see that? Yep. And yet these are not all, for these gods, angels, have no fear of the Holy Ghost. Now, this is not who you think it is. This is a part of the, the triune council. Remember, they are above these gods, and these gods don't care about these gods over here or these angels. So they're just going to give names to the mortals. And guess what they gave them? The Holy Ghost, the Father. I'm telling you that what we're seeing, terms like the Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son were angelic titles. And some angels took those titles despite the ramifications of it and gave it to the mortals so that they can worship those titles in opposition to the great I am. That's what they're showing us in this book. Number 12. This then is my misfortune. Thou most holy God of the triune. I am commanded to give but one name. Even the Holy Ghost or the Father. To who? The mortals. Or whether my angel host speak to the oracles 
or to persons capable of hearing spirits, that's the suis, and say to them, fight ye for the Holy Ghost, or fight ye for the creative element. Mortals heed us not, or they irreverently mock us, saying, what care we for a God that is but a ghost, a shadow, a creative element? Give us gods that talk and of themselves. We want no angels from the Holy Ghost. Bring your gods and let the oracles tell us what they say. Loamong then sent messengers and a suitable escort to Jerusalem on the earth where Thoth was stationed at the time with an angel host warriors commanding his presence before his holy council in Hapsindi, Loamong's heavenly city and kingdom. Now, after Thoth went thither, and they held a council of many names, a disturbance arose in the council in the consequence of the heat of the debates. For the gods of the council, for the most part, said, What better are we than the Jehovians? What greater power have we than the Jehovians? Who can answer the philosophy of Thoth? Is it the truth? Mortals have never been satisfied with an angel from the gods. They want the God himself. Was not this forever the weakness of the Jehovians? Such angels could give no name that mortals knew, save they falsely assumed a name, a DBA. Hence their weakness compared to such angels as unscrupulously, unscrupulously, assumed to be the gods. We all knew these things before our holy confederacy was formed. Yeah, one of the chief reasons for forming a confederacy in heaven was that we might more effectually overcome the power of evil spirits over mortals, the demons. They're telling you that angels have a hard time with demons. So they made a confederacy. In that day, we said the three persons, the Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost would enable us to appear in person and without authority unto the mortals. Behold, it hath now come to pass, mortals desire a more definite God, one known unto them. We cannot truthfully take the name of any god Thoth has named, nor any other god worshipped by mortals. Loamong then drove hence from the palace of his holy council that he might have an opportunity to reason with himself as to what he should do. And we have to continue. Next chapter. Hear me. And this is Satan. He entereth the holy council of Hapsindi to speak unto Loamong the triune. Hear me, O thou most upright of gods. Mine is a tale of pity and of horrors for thy people. Behold, thy one-time brother triunes have had great advantage of thee from the start. They had more populous kingdoms and subjects of higher grades. Nevertheless, wherein they have prospered, those shall be wise. They also found it necessary to have a name that mortals could call unto. And they took upon themselves the names Brahma and Buddha, both of which signify knowledge, no more, no less. This has satisfied the mortals. Now thou shalt choose the name Christi, which is the Ahamic word for knowledge also. In this, then, thou shalt have truth on thy side in heaven before the holy council, and on earth thou shalt have a personal embodiment. Satan is just sowing those seeds. <laughs> Do you see what yeah. they're doing here? Go to page 960. This is 960, point number eight. Jehovah said, this mark, 
right? This mark, I think I should go up a little bit. Right here, number three. Nevertheless, Loamong had it proclaimed in heaven and earth that he was the Christi. Uh-oh. Which is the Ahamic expression of all knowledge. The Lord said, now, therefore, Loamong was from this time forth a false god in heaven and on earth. An angel said that Loamong, another angel, was a false god, a false god in heaven and on earth. And lo among the angel commanded off the angel, his angel warrior in command of his earthly dominions to raise up tribes of warriors amongst mortals. And by the inspiration of said thought, these warriors were induced to call themselves Christians. God said that man may know this is true. Behold, the followers of Jehovah are not warriors, nor have they ever been. Jehovah said, this mark put I upon man from the time of Cain to the present day, that whoso raiseth his hand against his brother, raiseth his hand against me also. Remember, the Christians kill with a sword. So he's telling you, if you do that, you have the same mark that he gave Cain, because Cain slew Abel. And this mark shall distinguish my servants, the faithest, to the end of the world. Behold, I am, behold, I alone am all knowledge. What do you think about that? That's, that's heavyweight jamming right there. It is indeed. Guys, we're almost to the end. Hang with us. We can go for a couple more hours if you want us to, but for the sake of time, try to keep this within a godly duration. <laughs> <laughs> Page 68, let's go to point number 10. Isaiah, if you can read this all the way down to point 16. Right, okay. Uh, 10, why hath this thing come at this time? No man can answer that, Gabriel saith. There is a false God in heaven, and he hath falsely called himself Christi. Gabriel saith that he himself, Gabriel, provided the way for the gathering of the lost sheep of Israel through an Isu. Brothers, I will tell you why I am chosen of God, and it is to circumvent the Christians' idolatry from coming into Arabian Ar Arabian or Arabia uh, and the countries north and south and east. The countries were given by God to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and thence down to Moses, and thence down to us. There is but one God, and Gabriel is his angel of all the world, and God riseth up raiseth up a prophet from time to time to bless his chosen people he put his matter upon me i only know i i know only to serve god the christians are merciless warriors this false christi and his worshipers are working for the romans and not for salvation wherever they go they destroy libraries and all manner of learning and when i when i hear uh when I hear stuff like um, right here, it says they are merciless warriors. It brings me to think about when uh, Yahusha was in, uh, what, when he was getting arrested and the Roman soldiers came up and getting ready to uh, arrest the, uh, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And Peter, you know, he was with the funk at that time and he sliced off he slew the dude's ear yep and you know it was these guys who did it you know so so by all by all accounts shouldn't if if they were considered uh christians shouldn't was wasn't peter in the right he wasn't considered to be a christian no but that's that's what i mean like they're the definition of a christian right here 
is, you know, they're supposed to, they're merciless warriors to right. whereas the Messiah told him to put that sword away and healed uh, the Romans ear. Mm -hmm. Right now, these, these, these Romans, well, these Christians, Crusader, yeah, Crusaders, the Knights Templar, it says right here that they were working for the Romans and not for salvation. So when I look up the Knights Templar, it tells me, it tells me straight up, it says officially endorsed by the Roman Catholic Church by such decrees as the Papal Bull. So they're also known as the Papal Bull, right? Well, if you look at this decree here, within this, you're going to find the Knights Templar getting their uh, confirmation to go ahead and be an established order to do what they did. And this is all coming from Loamal, Knights Templar. Now, when you look at their, their, um, you know, what they're wearing, you see they got the cross here, right? Now we're going to see and Omega. You got the Alpha and Omega on this cross here, but you're going to see what this used to be, and how it became to be what you see right here. That's what we got to get into. So let's do that. I got to go back up. I'm going to go to page. You guys are following in the book with us. Page 358. And it's going to give us a clear distinction. And this is what ties us in to those apocryphal books. Book of Maccabees. Let's see here. Go on. 358 right here look at that so this is a wheel otherwise known as the rack they also call it the the ugsa the uga if you get up on the uga you're pretty much done and most of the faithists they willfully went to it they knew what they were about to embark they're not going to let go of their faith, uh, you know, to make an example and go into taking over, going into the Greeks festivals or whatever they wanted to do. They said, no, I'm going to just climb on this rack and die for, for what I believe, because I know that people are looking. And if I don't do it, especially if I'm an older scholar within my practice, the younger ones are going to fall astray. That's what they're going to do. So if we look at this here, number one, Zarathustra, the all peer, inquired concerning protection against imposters, to which Ahua Mazda, you've also seen that to be Ahura Mazda, on the religion of Zoroastrianism, that's under the gods of Xerxes and Artaxerxes, King Darius and all of them. And they answered saying, prove all things on the altar. If a man come before the people saying, behold, I am a prophet and he teach strange doctrines. Of course, it's going to be strange. If you're a faithist and you're an Uzayan, anything that the faithists talk about or do is going to be strange doctrine. So they're in trouble. He shall be tied on the wheel with his face toward the sun at high noon, 12 o'clock. And if he be a true prophet, the spirits who dwell by the altar will set him free. But if he be not released on the third night, on the third night, the will shall be carried out into the forest and stood up by the bushes. And if he be an imposter, the wildebeest will come and devour his flesh. You know what this makes me think of? Uh, you're, you're, you're big in, in the, the game world of uh, the God of War. Mm -hmm. And there was a character who, uh, he was banished to this major rock and he would be eaten alive by this bird. And then at some point he would be restored for it to happen all over again. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's what that sounds like. So if you were actually on this wheel and uh, 
if the if the if their, your savior or whoever you pray to didn't come rescue you on by the third night, they're gonna wheel you off into the wilderness, leave you in the bushes, and all kind of creatures are gonna come out and just eat you alive. Now yeah. here's the second part. It says they inquired concerning the wheel afterward. See, they care about this wheel. They really do. They care about what's inside the wheel. This is where we get the cross from. And who are Mazda said, when an imposter had perished on the wheel, behold, the wheel shall be no longer used as before, but the disciples shall cut away the rim of the wheel and cast it away, for it is useless. But the crossbars of the center of the wheel shall be retained, for it was on the bars that he was bound. And the cross of the bars is sacred, and it shall be hung in the place of worship, for it is a true cross. It's a true cross because it was used to test if you were a Suez or Sargis. And you got to get more information on the origin of the cross in the book of Safa. All right. Coming down to it, let's go back down to page 796. 796. Read Mark 13. Uga, that's the test of being on the rack, the wheel. If the S, the unseen, unseen world, release him, then is he our true prophet. He hath sworn by the wheel, he shall be tried, an oath to swear by the all I am. See, that's a word for the great I am as well. The angelic are not using that. Ishka, that's China. Duka, Poit. Ella, Fonsi. Allah, Ibra. I'm not going to even try to say that. Uh, pledging by Hebrew. All of these words. I think that's uh, Ishbua. Ishbua. Pledging by Hebrew. Thank you. Ukgak, which is Algonquian. And this is the Americas. He shall be proved on the cross, the Drew, and he dieth not. Let him answer on his name that he hath professed. If he be a false prophet, he will fear Uga, which is the test. False prophets' bones hanged on the Drew, the cross. The true are released by Eolin. Right? It's released by Eolin. I'm going to go down to section 19. Sa, the crossbones, the sign of an evil man that died in evil panic. The evil cross that is the English letter X. He was bound on the wheel and perished. There was no alley. There was no all holy in him. Let this mark be branded on his forehead that all men may know he is a false prophet. He rotted on the wheel. Sa, Sahar, let this be a sign of evil spirits. Hisa, Sa, Saeed, to wither. This shall be the sign of war. It shall be on the banners of the righteous. They shall go forth shouting, Izab, die, Sa, death, Sa. Let us perish for the righteousness sake rather than do evil. All right. So we got an idea of what the wheel is and how the cross came to be. So once they discarded the wheel, they took the cross and placed it inside of a holy place and considered it to be uh, something holy. It was used to figure out if somebody was a spiritist or not to be a proven prophet. And that image translated down to this here. The Christians used it to test, oh, to basically see if they're going to use their sword or not. 
and just remove that circle. Now, in the book of Maccabees, second book of Maccabees, chapter six, verse 18. Isaiah, go ahead and read that for me. 18, 18, 18. After him, they brought forth the sixth. And when he was about to die, he said, do not deceive yourselves in vain, for we are suffering these things on our own account because of our sins against our own God. Therefore, astounding things have happened. But do not think that you will go unpunished for having tired, tried to fight against God. Let me keep reading. Mm -hmm. Yes. The mother was especially admirable and worthy of honorable memory. Although she saw her seven sons perish within a single day. Man, that sucks. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I jumped the gun. We got to go up a little bit more. Uh, let's see. The first brother, let's see. I just. It's it's this is the. Remember, I gave you guys a preface. I told you a little warning. This is the martyrdom, martyrdom of seven brothers. Okay, this is actually the fourth Maccabees, and it's chapter eight. Um, we're gonna read seven through eighteen. You know what's in the back of my mind. <laughs> and all things we do in order. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you can read from seven, and we will stop at. Uh, 23. Okay. Man, you're making me uh, <laughs> work for my meal. <laughs> you got to have the whole story. Yeah. Seven. After the first brother had died in this way, they brought forward the second for their spot sport. They tore off the skin of his head with the hair and asked him, will you eat rather than have your body punished limb by limb? He replied in the language of his ancestors and said to them, no. Therefore, he turned, he in turn underwent tortures as the first brother had done. And when he was, when it, and when he was at his last breath, he said, you accursed wretch, you dismiss us from this pa present life, but the king of the universe will rise up to an everlasting renewal of life because we have died for his laws uh, after him the third was the victim of their sport when it was demanded he quickly put on his uh quickly put out his tongue and courageously stretched forth his hand and said nobly i got these from heaven and because of his laws i disdain them and from him i hope to get them back again as a result the king himself and those with him were astonished at this young man's spirit for he regarded his sufferings as nothing after he too had died they uh, maltreated and tortured the fourth in the same way when he was near death he said one cannot but choose to die at the hands of mortals to choose and to choose uh, I'm sorry, and to cherish the hope God gives of being raised again by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection of life. Next, they brought forth the fifth and maltreated him. But he looked at the king and said, because you have authority among mortals, though you are also mortal, you do what you please. But do not think that God has forsaken our people. Keep on and see how his mighty power will torture you and your descendants. After him, they brought forth the sixth son, and when he was about to die, he said, Do not deceive yourselves in vain, for we are suffering these things in our own uh, account, because of, your, because of our sins against our own God. Therefore, astounding things have happened, but do not think that you will go unpunished for having tried to fight against God. The mother was especially admirable and worthy of honorable memory. Although she saw her seven sons perish within a single day, she bore it with good courage because of her hope in the Lord. She encouraged the, 
each of them in the language of their ancestors filled with a noble spirit she reinforced her woman's reasoning with a man's courage and said to them i do not know how you came into being in my womb it was not i who gave you life and breath nor i set who set in order the elements within each of you therefore the creator of the world who shaped the beginning of humankind and devised the origin of all things will in his mercy give life and breathe back to you again since you now forget yourselves for the sake of his laws so they wasn't giving in at all right mm -hmm. at all um i mean that's that's a hard way to go and yeah that's tall being you, you hands cut off feet cut off fried alive and then the next one going all your brothers are being dismantled like that it's it's absolutely horrible now this is the martyrdom of eliezer right i'm going to read this one eliezer one of the scribes in high position uh this one he he first went out and then it was the woman and the seven her seven sons so it says Eliezer is one of the scribes in high position, a man now advanced in age and a noble of noble presence was being forced to open his mouth to eat swine's flesh. But he welcoming death with honor rather than life with pollution, he went up to the rack. That's that wheel. He went up to the rack, right? We saw it, page 358. You gotta take a look at this. Look at this while I'm reading for you guys. It's a rack right here. Right. He went up to the rack on his own accord, spitting out the flesh as all ought to go who have the courage to refuse things that is not right to taste so that was the law and because we've been given this new testament and we think that this jesus christi g-z-us g-i-i-z-i-u-s which is just hermes right he really is we've been given something to go against the law because he has fulfilled that law that's the story we've been given that's the story we've been given so if those things are not what it is and they're just angels masquerading then no more pork we really can't be eating it even if we do it in moderation i mean it's up to us it really is but this is one of the law the laws that eliezer wanted to keep do not eat swine's flesh, right? Even for the natural love of life. Those who were in charge of that unlawful sacrifice took the man out aside because of their long acquaintance with him and privately urged him to bring meat of his own providing, proper for him to use and to pretend that he was eating the flesh. They were trying to help him out pretend eating the flesh of the sacrificial meal that he had been commanded by the king so that by doing this he might be saved from death and be treated kindly on account of his own his old friendship with them but making a high resolve worthy of his years and the dignity of his old age and the gray hairs that he had reached with distinction and his excellent life even from childhood and moreover according to the holy god given law he declared himself quickly telling them to send him to hades he wasn't even going to pretend wasn't Cause... didn't the um uh, didn't the same thing happen to daniel with uh king nebuchadnezzar um uh, king Where nebuchadnezzar was... no i don't think so i think in that one nebuchadnezzar had a dream right and he didn't understand it so he told daniel to come and um decipher it and he did no, I, 
I would I would say I th- it was it had to be Daniel um, or is somebody in captivity where the king provided uh, food and they said I'm not eating this I need to have some vegetables or some uh, some water and some vegetables might have been the three brothers I, no I think it was Daniel because I think that's uh, that's where the Daniel fast comes from with just vegetables mm. we'll have to go back and check it out where he was saying I'm, I'm not eating this it could be a, a, a clear parallel right and because that is the law those that are considered faithless and they want to keep that law they're going to do the same thing over and over and over again right mm-hmm. said, send me to Hades I'm not even going to pretend verse 24 such pretense is not worthy of our time of life he said for many of the young might suppose that Eliezer in his 90th year had gone over to an alien religion and through my pretense for the sake of living a brief moment longer they would be led astray because of me while I defile and disgrace my old age even if for the present I would avoid the punishment of mortals yet whether I live or die I will not escape the hands of the Almighty Therefore, by bravely giving up my life now, I will show myself worthy of my old age and leave to the young of noble example of how to die a good death willingly and notably for the revered and holy laws. When he had said this, he went at once to the rack, to the rack, those who a little before had acted toward him with good will, now changed to ill will because the words he had uttered were in their opinion, sheer madness. When he was about to die under the blows, he groaned aloud and said, it is clear to the Lord in his holy knowledge that thou, that though I might have been saved from death, I am enduring terrible sufferings in my body under this beating, but in my soul, I am glad to suffer these things because I fear him. So in this way, he died, leaving in his death an example of nobility and a memorial of courage, not only to the young, but to the great body of his nation. Now, who did all of that? Who else? A lamb. Yep. No one ever told us that there was someone else who did the exact same thing. Eliezer didn't die for our sins. He died so that we wouldn't sin as the example. To keep the law. I want you to, we're going to end here, but I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. He died, Eliezer, not for your sins, but so that he would be an example for you to prevent sinning and keep the laws. Keep the laws. Now we have to prove this as we go along. This is where we get into scripture and we look at the parallels. Because up until this point, we have been looking at things which the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all of those things are like, okay, what do we do with it? Right? So now we have to take the Old Testament and parallel that with the New Testament going forward, and we see the similarities. Could there be someone responsible for writing all of those God spells or Gospels? Very well could be. Where do we fit in that? These are the questions that we have to answer in the next segment because we have them up until this point. Anything else you'd like to say, Isaiah, before we go? No, I mean, it's just, it's it's good stuff. Uh, You know, study to show yourself approved. And he did. Get out there. Go ahead and test him. He says, show me and I will prove myself to you throughout your study. Seek the Lord in all things. 
Exactly. Exactly. So that's going to be it for today's uh, little podcast, little show, little Bible study. And uh, we're going to continue this teaching, this message. Stay with us if you like. If not, that's okay. The links to everything that we went over in this will be in the description. Hope to see you guys next time. Thank you. Peace. Peace.